For the last 10 years, I have been the palliative care chaplain at Strathcarn Hospice. Let me take you back two and a half years pre-pandemic as we watched the news and unfurling of what was going to unfold and what we were going to experience. And we were on imminent lockdown. And I was in my office and the chief exec came up, walked past and said, we're sending people home to work from home. But we're not spending you. <laughs> because we see that your role is important. So in the midst of that, as the pandemic unfurled, I watched staff. I watched staff see an invisible force come towards them, threatening them. As they exposed themselves to that virus and supporting loved ones in the hospice. And my role as a chaplain was to support them. My uniform changed from plain clothes into PPE and scrubs. Anxiety, vulnerability, all were there and tangible. Visiting went from unlimited to restricted to two people per bed for only a short period of time. Families struggled with the loss of their loved ones. Funerals went from unlimited, unlimited people there. And one funeral was about to do, there was going to be about 300 people there. When I conducted the funeral, there was only five. The daycare closed. No daycare allowed. 100 patients per week had come into the hospice, 20 person people per day, men and women, supported by themselves, supported by, their, by other patients, no longer were able to see one another. Yep, there's something about that that was so vulnerable for people left at home with a terminal diagnosis. And as chaplain, one of the things that came up was a men-only Zoom. So now I sit every fortnight on a Monday at quarter to ten, eleven o'clock it kicks off and I sit on Zoom with about five or six gentlemen, various ages, various diagnoses and we build fellowship on Zoom. I want to say to you, we have a love-hate relationship with Zoom and social media. Let me tell you one thing about that, is that I think it's good in this sense. For people with a palliative care diagnosis who can't go through the theatrical element of a church service, standing, sitting, listening for an hour and a half or however long it will be. Because what happens is they might not be able to get to the toilet in time. They might struggle. They've lost their energy. So to sit in this auditorium today is impossible. And so the way that they can keep connected with the church is being online. Because if we take that part away from our service, we alienate them and don't support them. So it isn't vital that we keep that as part. Tomorrow morning, just before 11 o'clock, well, at 9 o'clock in the morning, I will sit down with Susan, maybe Sarah, and doctors and nurses, and we'll have a briefing, a morning briefing, an explanation of 
what every patient has been like in the last 24 hours, whether they're declining, whether they're stabilised, what things happen, do they need a medical, like, medical review, do they need chaplaincy input, do they need patient family support to go in and support them and the family. So have that for half an hour, all patients and then patient unit discussed. After that, we'll sit down and have a bed management meeting. Yeah, there's twitches there from some parts of the congregation. How many people are on the waiting list? Probably 10. How many beds available? None. Maybe one. Maybe a couple. So we sit down as a multidisciplinary team and listen to case by case what that person has, what's going on with them, the background, and we have to make a judgment of who gets a bed and who doesn't. And then we get to 11 o'clock and we will, ch we will have the biggest laugh with five men on a Zoom session. We will laugh we will joke, we will cry, we will engage in conversations and we will support them in any way that they need. But biblically, said one vision was sitting at death's doorway and watching and supporting people as they transition from this world to the next. That's my role, it's my privilege. But the Good Samaritan is a biblical image that holds really passionate to me and that is because he walked alongside he cared, he lifted he soothed the person's wounds he handed the person over to care and then he came back and he supported the innkeeper now biblically I have always thought that the victim always survived and that's probably because as a christian we sit there and have a positive mindset and think isn't it great what happened i'm going to ask you just to change the end of the story what happened if the victim died what would have happened if the victim died the man gave his all, regardless of outcome. And for my role as a chaplain, I stand journey with Sarah, Chris Ann, Susan, and have done with Fiona, as we have cared for people to that doorway, knowing that we hand them over as they walk through that doorway. That's the privilege that we all have. And if I was to ask you, please remind us, please keep us in your prayers. It is a privilege to work in Strathcan, an honor to work there. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it is vital, like the Good Samaritan, that he journeyed with people, that they weren't alone in their last hours on this earth. Thank you very much.